Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. In this short video, I'm going to explain how you can use Open PLC Editor to draw function block diagrams for your PLC. So I'm going to start right away. The first thing you need is you need to create a new project by clicking over here and then you have to select an empty folder. So I'm going to create an empty folder. For example, I'm going to name it as test FPD and select this folder as my default folder. Now it will ask me to select the language. So I'm going to select function block diagram, which is over here. Now I can draw function block diagram right on this workspace using these elements that are used for creating function block diagrams. But before that, as you know, we have to create the variables which are required in this program. So I'm going to create three variables that I'm going to use later on. So to add variables, I'm going to go over here, click on this plus sign and the variable will be added. I'm going to name it as input A and I'm going to select its type as Boolean type. So right now I am not concerned with any physical hardware of the PLC. That is why I don't need the proper addressing. However, if you want, you can add the address over here. For the second input, I'm going to add another variable and name it as input B and its type is automatically Boolean. So I'm good with it. And for the last variable, it will be the output. I'm going to name it as output and its type is once again Boolean. So that's it. I'm going to need these three inputs, input A, B, and the output. Now I'm going to use these inputs and output to draw a function block diagram or an AND operation. You will see that it is quite simple over here. So select this option of create a new block, click somewhere in the workspace, and it will ask you that what function block you want to use. You have to get familiarized with these options over here because Different function blocks that are built in into this software are present over here. For example, if I open the first one, then you can see that uh, the counter is over here. And similarly, the timer is over here as well. But right now we don't need these things. So I'm going to go with the bitwise and then you can see logical functions are over here. I'm going to use this AND operation, click OK. And here is the AND function block. So on this side, I need to provide the first input and on over here, I need to provide the second input. So for that, I need to create a variable. A variable can be created by using this element. I'll click over here and then somewhere in the workspace, the class is input type because I'm going to attach this variable to input. And I'm going to use this variable that is input A and click OK. So now I have this thing over here. I just need to connect it with the input one. Similarly, you can add the input B as well. Like this. And now you need the output. For the output, you need to follow the same routine. That is click on this variable button. Click somewhere in the workspace, select the output, but make sure that you have selected output over here in the class. Now I'm going to select this output variable and that's it. So this is the function block diagram that is performing an operation between input A and input B and storing the result in the variable output. Now to check whether this is running fine or not, I'm going to run this thing by clicking on this start PLC simulation. It will take some time. Now you can see that over here that the PLC has started. Now to debug this thing or to see whether this thing is working correctly or not, I will open the debug instance by clicking on this icon over here. And I also want to see the values of all the variables that are involved. So I'm going to open these variables as well by clicking on this icon. So on the right side panel, you can see that all my inputs and output are listed. And right now all these variables have false value. So I'm going to turn the input A to true and see what happens. For that, you have to click on this lock button over here and then click on this toggle value and now click OK. So you, now you can see that it has been converted to true. Over here, you can see that from input A, the wire has turned light blue, which means that it has true value. But for the time being, the output is not true because for AND operation, both inputs has to be true for the output to become true. 
So I'm going to turn the other input that is input B2 as well. So for that I'm going to click over here, click on toggle value and click OK. Now you can see that the input B wire has also turned blue and on the other side the output wire has turned green. That is the output has become true. In the debugger instance over here you can also see that the values are true over here. So now if I turn input A back to false then the output should turn back to false. So I'm going to toggle this value once again and click OK. So input A has turned false. You can see over here it has gone dark blue. Input B is still high which is shown by this light blue color and the output has gone low which is shown by this black line. Or over here you can see that input A is false, input B is true and output is false once again. So in this fashion you can simply implement function block diagrams using open PLC editor. As another example I am going to implement a latching function using function block diagrams. So for that I need to delete these things. First I have to stop the PLC simulation. Now I am going to delete all these things but I am still going to use these inputs. So if you remember the latching diagram in function block diagrams input A and output should be OR together and then the result should be ended with input B. So we are going to draw the same function block diagram over here. So for that the first thing is I need an OR gate and that can be found over here. And the other gate that I need is an AND gate. So these are the two gates that are required. For the OR gate I need the output to be OR with the input A. So I need to create a variable which is input A. Attach it over here and for the other input I need the output variable that will be attached over here. So for that I am going to create the output variable. But in this case the output variable just don't need to have the class of output because it is not just the output. It is also acting as the input and it is also acting as the output. So I'm going to use in out class for this thing. So I've selected in out over here and then the output and click OK. And this is my variable that can act as the input and output as well. So for, from this side it will act as the input. So I'm going to connect it over here. And from this side it will act as the output. So I know that this thing should be connected over here. So I've connected this thing like this. Now for the second block which is the AND block, the output of the first block should be connected as the input 1 and secondly the input 2 should be the input B. So I'm going to create another variable of input type and I'll select input B over here like this and connect input B with the input 2 of the AND block. That's it. Now this is the function block diagram that will implement the latching function of the output. If input A and input B both are pressed, the output will turn on. And if the output is on, now if input A will go low, the output will still remain on. So now let's see whether it is happening like that or not. So for that I'm going to start the PLC simulation. And now I'm going to click on this debug instance. So this is the debugging environment. Over here you can see that all the inputs are already there. So I'm going to turn on the input A. So you can see that the input A has turned on. The output of this OR function has turned on. But the output variable is still off because it is coming from the AND operation. And it will turn on only when input B will go high. So I'm going to turn input B high as well. So now you can see that the output is on and over here you can also see that the output value is true. Now if input A goes low, output should remain true. So I'm going to turn this value back to false. So you can see that input A has gone low. Over here you can see that input A has gone false but the output is still true. So for the output to go false, you need to turn off input B as well. So now I'm going to turn off input B. 
now you can see that the output has gone off so this is the latching function which we studied in the previous videos and i have implemented that thing using a function block diagram so dear learners i hope you have learned the basic idea and the basic flow of the software through which you can implement function block diagram that's everything for this video thank you and take care